Wonder Woman 1984 is the sequel to the 2017 Wonder Woman movie, and the ninth film in the DC Extended Universe. As somebody who hasn't particularly enjoyed DC's recent offerings, I found this film to be a breath of fresh air. It's hugely entertaining, has a lot of heart, and worked perfectly as a piece of escapist fun. The runtime itself is the first thing I want to mention. Clocking in at two and a half hours, the film is a fair bit longer than I thought it would be, and although it drags at certain parts, I think the runtime is earned as it gives all the major characters ample time to shine and develop. The movie is first and foremost concerned with its characters. Diana, Steve, Barbara and Max Lord all feel authentic, and you really warm to each of them in their own way, even the villains. I dare say, the two villains in the film are possibly the best bad guys in the DCEU, General Zod possibly notwithstanding as I do have a soft spot for him. But everyone's motivations, drives and desires are all made abundantly clear and explored in great depth. The film is, fundamentally, about desire. Each character is given something they want, and the way they deal with their wishes being fulfilled, and indeed the consequences of those wishes, was something I found really interesting. It breaks down the characters in a way I've not really seen in a big spectacle superhero movie of recent years, and in that sense it was incredibly refreshing. And because you can empathise so well with the villains in the movie, you genuinely don't know where the story is going to end up, or how it will resolve itself. Even the trailers don't give too much away about the plot, so I'll refrain from discussing spoilers as usual. Although I really enjoyed the characters in the story, and I do think it's the best DC film to come out for some years, it was by no means a perfect film. I found the action sequences, the bread and butter of most superhero movies, to be lacking. They were very strangely shot and choreographed, and nigh on incomprehensible at times, especially with sequences that relied more heavily on visual effects. The visual effects themselves were shaky in some areas as well, which was a bit of a shame but it didn't totally take me out of the movie. I found the Hans Zimmer score to be fairly weak, leaning a little too heavily on reusing music from the earlier films. And of the main actors, I still think Gal Gadot is perhaps a little flat, particularly compared to her co-stars, which worked in the first film but less so here, especially when you consider that the mentor and fish out of water dynamic she had with Steve in the first movie is reversed in this film. I also found the opening sequence to be pretty tangential and I think possibly could have been cut entirely, although it does set up one theme in the film surrounding Diana's arrogance, and it introduces a very, very minor plot device. But certainly, I think it could have been trimmed down, as it meanders a lot and doesn't really contribute all that much to the film overall. But that all said, there really is a lot to like about this film. It's great fun and explores its characters with more than a little nuance, and you get the impression the filmmakers were actually trying to say something with the film, with its emphasis on themes of desire and wish fulfilment, and by extension society's push for instant gratification. It goes above and beyond what you'd expect from a typical superhero blockbuster, but doesn't quite push itself far enough to be considered one of the greats. Certainly from DC, and I suspect over the coming years given the recently announced slate of Marvel projects, there seems to be a trend towards more standalone superhero films and television series. Indeed, there are no major team-up event films on the horizon, and Wonder Woman 1984 perfectly encapsulates what a superhero movie can be without the constraints of shared universe tie-ins and teasers for future films. Unlike its predecessor, there's virtually nothing to connect this film to the DCEU, and I personally think it worked better for it. With other upcoming DC films like The Batman having no connection to any existing universe whatsoever, it'll be interesting to see if the trend continues. I'm not suggesting that more standalone movies are any better or worse than the shared universe films, but I do think they afford their filmmakers more creative liberties, and can end up being more interesting as a result. Overall, I'd recommend Wonder Woman 1984. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's going to course correct the much maligned DCEU, but it is a really entertaining romp, and I think it's the kind of film that perfectly encapsulates what superhero movies can be at, in my opinion, their best. Relatively light, but with a powerful message that could be enjoyed by virtually all demographics. Certainly, I thought it was the best DCEU offering since 2013's Man of Steel. I did enjoy the first Wonder Woman film, but I think that free of the shackles of the DCEU connections, Patty Jenkins' later story featuring the titular Amazonian princess is much more effective. If you've seen Wonder Woman 1984, or if you're looking forward to seeing it, or have any thoughts on the film at all, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this review, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more, but until next time, thanks.